So uh, good afternoon and welcome to 30 Minute Thursdays. My name is Dr. Maura McCarthy and I'm a sports medicine orthopedic surgeon at Hospital for Special Surgery. On today's webinar, we're gonna talk, to, uh, talk about sports injuries of the ankle and the foot. And our guests today are Drs. Elizabeth Cody and Dr. Nick Scrignoli. Dr. Cody is an orthopedic surgeon specializing in foot and ankle surgery at HSS Stanford. And Dr. Scrignoli is a sports medicine physician at HSS Stanford. So welcome everybody. Thank you, thanks for having us. Thank you. All right, so, um, so I wanted to get started here, just kind of um, giving you a brief overview. We're talking about foot and ankle injuries today. Um, obviously, that's a pretty big scope of things to cover in a short time, so we're going to just do our best to give you guys a very brief overview. But when we look at injuries of any part of the body, anatomy is a very important part of that. And so the first thing to understand are the different tissues that can be affected by injury. A lot of this is common sense, but I kind of broke it down into the different tissues. So obviously, if injury to the bone can result in a fracture, you can also get bone contusions or bruises. Um, you can have an injury to the cartilage. Uh, and sometimes even tearing of the cartilage. Um, an injury to a ligament is called a sprain. So when we talk about an ankle sprain, that's a ligament that was injured or stretched. Uh, an injury to a tendon or muscle is actually called a strain. So uh, when you hear someone strain their hamstring, that's kind of the muscle and tendon that can be injured in that mechanism. And then there's also nerves and blood vessels that can be injured. So, uh, so to understand the anatomy, it's a very, you know, there's a lot to go through, but we're just going to hit kind of the most common sites of injury. So when we look at the outside of the ankle here, the most commonly injured ligament uh, in the ankle is the ATFL. And it sits on the outside of the ankle. I'll highlight it here for you. Um, so you see it highlighted in orange and that, that can be injured if you twist your foot inward. Um, it's actually the most commonly torn ligament in the body. Another commonly torn ligament in the outside of the ankle is the CFL, and that's highlighted in orange in this picture. And if we look at the inside of the ankle, it's called the medial ankle. Um, there is a complex of four ligaments that makes a very strong complex to stabilize the um, tibia uh, as it stabilizes the ankle, and that's called the deltoid ligament. So I'll highlight that for you here too. So then let's go ahead and look at some of the tendons in the foot and ankle. Um, there's a lot of different tendons, muscles coming from uh, the calf into the ankle that help with uh, push off and lifting your toes and flexing your toes and that ankle stability. Um, all of these can be injured and affected uh, when you twist your ankle or depending on the types of repetitive movements you're doing. Um, so there's both, you know, the outside of the ankle and then the inside of the ankle. Uh, and these tendons are the structures that allow for movement. Uh, they connect the muscles to the bones. Um, so that's the inside and then um, just kind of talking a broad overview of uh, ankle injuries you can go on to that next slide yeah perfect um, so there's you know acute injuries and then there's chronic injuries so when we talk about acute typically that's like a one incidence uh, type thing you twisted your ankle that's an ankle sprain an acute injury and then there's also those overuse injuries where it's that repetitive use that's caused a problem uh, your body is not able to keep up with the demands, not able to heal in time, or there's uh, some kind of uh, irregular improper movement that's causing irritation to one of the tissues. Um, so some common acute injuries are ankle sprains, by far the most common, uh, fractures in the foot and ankle, um, turf toe, like a hyperextension of the great toe, um, and then some of the overuse injuries that are very common are stress fractures, so just continued repetitive stress on a bone and the bone eventually breaks down and can't keep up with that and cause a fracture. Um, shin splints, sesamoiditis, which are two small bones in the front of your foot that can get irritated, especially in runners. Uh, and then tendinopathy, which is basically saying an injury to one of the tendons in the foot and ankle. So some quick facts about ankle sprains. Um, the first is, the ATFL. So the ATFL is the most commonly torn ligament in the foot and ankle, also the most commonly torn ligament in the entire body. Um, so about 80% of these, you can go on to that next slide, um, are actually caused by an inversion ankle injury. So the bottom right corner here, you can see a picture of an inversion twisting of the foot. Um, so you can imagine that's a very common way for the foot to kind of turn in. It puts a, 
a large load on that ATFL ligament and can sometimes cause it to sprain or even completely rupture. Um, so ankle sprains uh, account for about 14% of all sports related injuries. And when we hone in on uh, basketball as a sport, uh, it's a very high rate of injuries. So in the general population, 25% of all basketball injuries are actually ankle sprains and 13%, even in the high level NBA athletes, 13% uh, of those injuries are ankle sprains. So I'll take over at this point. So there are some basic things that you can do to help yourself recover from pretty much any foot or ankle injury. Um, regardless of the injury, the principles are the same. So the first most important thing that you want to do is elevate. So elevation helps decrease swelling and it'll help your body um, heal itself. So if you've got too much swelling, it's gonna be harder for your body to heal. So the way you want to elevate is you want to make sure your foot's really high. So your foot should be above your knee, which should be above your hip. So just remember it as your foot should be at or above the level of your heart. Um, the next thing you want to do is uh, ice. So icing can be really helpful for uh, decreasing pain um, and also swelling after an injury. So right after you've had an injury, it's a great idea. You want to ice for about 15 minutes at a time. NSAIDs or anti-inflammatory drugs are also very helpful. Um, so these include drugs like Advil, Motrin, and Aleve. So right after you've had an injury, these can also be really helpful for decreasing pain and inflammation. Rest, uh, also super important. So you want to make sure that you're staying away from uh, any sporting activities until that pain that you feel has improved. Um, and finally, using a brace or a boot can also be very helpful after an injury. Um, so the next slide, I'll show you more what I mean by that. So when I talk about a brace and a boot, this is really what I mean. So on the left, you can see um, a cam boot or a controlled ankle motion boot. So it might look like a little bit of overkill, but these are really helpful for controlling swelling and pain after an injury. So maybe you just need to wear it for a day or two until the pain improves. For more severe injuries, I'll put people in these for a period of weeks. On the right side, you can see an ASO or an ankle shoe orthosis. Um, and this is a really great brace for people with ankle sprains. It helps stabilize the ankle and prevent re-injury. So this brace can be worn in a sneaker and um, it's really helpful, especially if you're just returning to sport from an injury, uh, maybe you're just a few weeks out. Um, this will help you feel more confident and help stabilize your ankle so you don't get a new injury. So you might say, do I really need a brace? Um, and the answer is that not everybody really needs a brace. Um, it's, it's really only indicated in um, certain scenarios. So the goal of the brace is to avoid re-injury. Repeat injuries are, are more likely to cause more damage in the ankle joint that's, that's going to lead to long-term problems. So in those first few months after an injury, that's when it's really important, important to avoid another injury. In those first three months, the ligaments are still healing together. So if you tear them again in that period, they're going to ultimately heal weaker and more stretched out than they would have in the first place. So if you're returning to sport within three months of an injury, if you're playing a high risk sport like basketball or soccer, I think it's a great idea to use that brace for those first few, few months. Um, the other scenario is that maybe you've had multiple sprains in the past, so you already have a somewhat unstable ankle, then in that scenario, it's a good idea to use a brace whenever you play sports um, to help decrease your risk of another injury. And a common question is, when should I see a doctor? What's a sign that you might have a more serious injury? So the first and maybe most obvious is if you can't put any weight on your foot. That's a sign that it's maybe something more severe, possibly a fracture, and you should probably see a doctor and have some x-rays done. If you have severe swelling or bruising, that's another sign of potentially a more severe injury. Or if you just haven't had any improvement in pain after three or four days, you're still limping around, it doesn't hurt to get evaluated. So people often ask, how long is it gonna take for me to recover and return to sports? And the answer is that after an ankle sprain, it's highly variable. And really for any foot or ankle injury, it's very variable and depends on how bad the injury was. So a mild or low grade sprain, that's maybe an injury where you've partially torn one or two ligaments of the ankle or maybe just stretched them a little. And that's an injury that you can usually recover from very quickly and return to sports within two weeks. For a more severe injury or a high grade sprain, that's one where you've torn multiple ligaments in the ankle completely. Um, and maybe you've got some bone bruises or contusions. That's a more severe injury that's gonna take longer, maybe four to six months before you can return to sports. So there's obviously a very wide spectrum of injury um, and every patient and every injury uh, are different in terms of returning to sport. 
So physical therapy is one thing that really works well for ankle sprains. So um, the, the basic approach in physical therapy after an ankle injury is to increase your strength, balance, and something called proprioception. So proprioception is awareness of the position of one's body. So that's your muscle's ability to sense where they are and to help correct uh, imbalances. So a lot of the work that you'll do in physical therapy is working on these exercises like shown here to improve your balance and your body's muscles ability to stabilize the ankle. So doing these exercises will um, improve your pain and also help avoid re-injury. So you can see there's a wide spectrum in the, the type and difficulty of these kinds of exercises. So these are all people doing proprioceptive exercises. So these are all things that will help um, train the muscles around the ankle to stabilize the ankle and that will help prevent uh, repeat injuries and help you recover. So that's kind of a brief overview. I guess we can move on to some uh, questions now. Excellent. Um, so I would encourage anyone who has any questions to send them to us through the uh, Q&A portal. Um, we did have one question that popped up during Dr. Cody's talk, and the question was actually answered by her next slide, but it leads me to another question. Their question was, if an athlete sprains or rolls the ankle, how long can they wait before seeing a doctor, which I think you just answered. But to piggyback on that, does everybody get x-rays? Does everybody get an MRI with an ankle sprain? How do you decide? So typically um, you only get x-rays of an ankle sprain if there's tenderness over the bone. So um, uh, generally when I see patients, um, if, if it's bad enough for you to come see me, generally everybody gets x-rays. Um, but um, uh, typically it's just if you have tenderness over the bone. Great, and what about your thoughts for MRI? Um, so for MRI, I usually won't get an MRI right off the bat um, because uh, in the first few days after an injury, it's actually difficult to tell what exactly is going on. So everybody has this, um, people often have a big swollen ankle and it's, it's really hard to tell exactly what's injured. So I often um, give them a week or two to let things cool down and then I re-examine them. And if there's still a lot of pain, they're still struggling, that's the point at which I'll, I'll typically get an MRI. Awesome. All right, so I have another couple of questions and I'd like to send this one over to Dr. Scrignoli. Um, what are some potentially dangerous movements that athletes should avoid, especially if they're training at home without supervision or without a coach, or, or are there any? Yeah, that's a good question. So, um, you know, I can't think of any specific movements that are actually uh, dangerous or to avoid. A lot of times these injuries are happening um, you know, whether you land on an uneven surface or land on someone else's foot. Um, and that's usually kind of the situation. So it's pretty hard to predict those things, but there are some small things you can do to help prevent injury. And I think um, kind of the simplest is, you know, try to strengthen the muscles around your foot and ankle. And so um, like Dr. Cody was talking about, those proprioceptive balanced exercises are a really good way to prevent injury. Um, and you can do a lot of these at home just by doing some simple balance, you know, balance on one foot, make it more difficult by putting a pillow underneath your foot. Um, I think it's important whenever you're incorporating a new exercise that you start slow. Uh, make sure you're doing a good warm up and, and maintaining good flexibility by spending some time stretching at the end of your exercises. Um, but really, a lot of these injuries are kind of unpredictable, sudden, you know, sudden and difficult to avoid. So I would start by just uh, strengthening to prevent that. And then if you do feel like you're getting really fatigued at the end of a workout, maybe that's not the time to incorporate like a trail run um, where you're going to be hitting uneven surfaces consistently. So, um, so just being smart about the type of activity you incorporate and when in your training you do that. Yeah, that's a great point. Excellent. Um, that actually answered one of the next questions that we had from the audience, which was regarding some simple at-home exercises to do. Do you guys know by any chance uh, a website that has a list of these exercises or anything along those lines? I don't know one off the top of my head. <laughs> Fair yeah, enough. A website. Um, there is uh, at home exercise, uh, like for some physical therapy exercises or, or home exercise program.com, I think it's called home exercise program. Um, so they have some exercises, but a lot of this stuff you can find, um, you know, a simple place to start is just single leg balance exercises. Uh, you know, a single leg Russian deadlift uh, is a good exercise you can do. Using the BOSU ball, like Dr. Cody showed, is a really 
that's kind of a higher level balance. I wouldn't start there, but once you start to build strength, that's a good place to go. So, you know, you can get those relatively cheap and, and have one of those at home as well. Something that's easy to do, um, if people are lifting upper body, you can just stand on one leg while you lift weights. Um, so that also, that, that's a really simple thing to do to, to incorporate into your routine to, to add in some balance exercises. Excellent. All right, Dr. Cody, here's one for you. Uh, what are some of the biggest concerns parents often have about young athletes and foot and ankle injuries? So I think um, typically the biggest thing that parents are worried about and that they ask about, they want to make sure that their kids are going to be okay in the long term. They want to know that this injury is not going to um, lead to problems down the road. Um, so um, after an ankle sprain in particular, um, ankle sprains are so common and almost everybody who has an ankle sprain is going to be just fine. It's actually pretty rare to have long-term problems from an ankle sprain. Um, so, um, and that goes for, for most injuries that um, kids have in the foot and ankle. Um, they're usually going to be just fine. So the biggest uh, way that you can run into long-term problems is if you have a re-injury. So um, a common scenario that I see is um, you sustain a sports-related ankle sprain and then maybe, um, you know, um, it's um, the peak part of the season and you're really anxious to get back to play. And so you return maybe a little too early and then re-injure the ankle. And so um, in that scenario, you can develop more serious problems that um, becomes more difficult to treat um, and leads to more time away from sport. So really um, the thing you want to avoid is re-injury. So make sure that you take enough time to recover from the injury and you're probably going to be fine, but it is important to take um, the appropriate time away from sport to rest and recover, um, to do the physical therapy, um, and, and if you do those things, you're, you're probably going to be just fine. I think that's a really, really good point. Sometimes it's hard to make that point with uh, competitive athletes and things like that, but it's a really good point. Um, Dr. Scrignoli, a question just came in from the audience, which uh, piggybacks on another question I was going to ask you. If I have weak ankles, are there certain sports I should avoid? Or alternatively, what sports put the foot and ankle most at risk? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, I try not to limit people's participation in sports the best I can, because I really want, you know, everyone to be able to find a sport they, they enjoy and uh, have fun doing. So certainly there are some things you can do. You know, if you're, you've had multiple sprains in the past, you know, wearing an ankle brace like Dr. Cody recommended is a good way to try to avoid that. Um, but certainly there are certain sports that are just higher risk. We know that. So um, basketball definitely is a higher risk for ankle sprains. Um, and uh, volleyball, indoor volleyball, football, soccer. Um, those are probably some of the highest risk ones, rugby as well. Um, so really it's kind of the sports that involve either a high level of contact or um, a lot of jumping that puts you at risk. Um, so I wouldn't say if you have weak ankles, don't, you know, don't go out and play basketball, but you might think, oh, okay, if I've had weak ankles, I've had an injury in the past, maybe I put a, an ASO brace on my ankle uh, to prevent re-injury because we do know that re-injury can oftentimes be a more severe injury. Great. Um, so Dr. Cody, here's a question from the audience. Um, can you give some guidance about footwear, orthotics, um, where to buy shoes, special shoes or inserts, things like that? Generally speaking, I recommend whatever shoes are most comfortable. So if you're really comfortable in a pair of shoes, I think that's the best pair of shoes for you. Um, custom orthotics, I do not recommend on a routine basis. Um, I think um, they're only indicated um, in certain types of foot shapes. So um, if, you, if you feel like you're not getting the support you need from regular sneakers, you can try over-the-counter arch supports or over-the-counter inserts, um, many of which are very good. Um, and you find one that feels comfortable to you and makes your foot feel good and stable. And I think that's just as good, if not better, than a custom orthotic. So you don't necessarily need custom orthotics. Um, and then sneakers, it's whatever is comfortable. For people with very high arches, you are at higher risk for ankle sprains because of the shape of your foot. So um, if you have a high arch and you've had an ankle sprain, you might consider trying an arch, uh, or you don't want an arch support actually, because an arch support will help tip you more into spraining your ankle. So you want to avoid using a big arch support or a big custom orthotic. So um, in the scenario that you do have a really high arch, you should consider using an insert called the arch rival insert. So it's the opposite of an arch support. So it helps kind of flatten your foot a little more. It'll probably make you feel a little bit more stable. 
um, and help prevent those types of injuries. So that's the only insert that I recommend on a regular basis, and that's only for patients who have really high arches. Um, and if you do have a high arch and you have had multiple sprains, um, that might not be enough for you. You might consider using an ASO brace also. And just a question on that. Is there, in your experience, a different be difference between tolerance of ankle braces in different sports? For example, do soccer players tolerate ankle braces as well as basketball players? Or could you consider taping or doing things like that in, in people who um, play lower extremity sports? So taping is just not going to be as effective as a brace. Um, I think some people find benefit from taping, but um, if you um, do actually need the extra support, a brace is the only thing that's going to give it to you. The ASO brace that I showed in my talk um, is generally well tolerated by most athletes. If um, you feel like it's too bulky, there are variations of the same kind of brace um, that are a little more low profile that you can find on Amazon or other places online that might work better for you. But um, it's that lace up brace design with the crossing straps that go around um, that really helps stabilize the ankle. And that's um, overall going to be more effective than taping. Great. And what you were talking about before, over-the-counter orthotics, uh, sometimes people will ask about things like super feed and things like that. Are those good quality and can they provide support or are they not helpful? Uh, I do think that they are pretty good quality. There's a huge variety in the kinds of over-the-counter orthotics that you can get. There are tons of different brands and each brand has different makes of orthotics. So, so like I've said, whatever is comfortable for you. If you've got a flatter foot, that's a scenario where you might want more of an arch support, um, but don't wear it if um, it's very uncomfortable, you don't feel good wearing it. Um, but, um, you know, I, I think, I think um, Superfeet and um, other companies do make good high quality orthotics that I think can be equivalent to custom orthotics. I, I don't think you need to necessarily get customs um, because the over the counters are quite good. And yeah, just where I would think, people- uh, I was Sorry. just gonna piggyback on that. Yeah, I think like when you're using an orthotic too, it's important not to like, put an insert in your shoe and go run eight miles, right? You got to kind of like give your chance, your foot a chance to get used to it too. So just start going on walks with it. If you try like a new insert in your shoe, cause we don't want to cause other problems by, you know, overcorrecting or, or just causing pain, a sore spot from something else. So I think it's good to break them in just like a pair of new shoes. That's exactly right. So um, the first time you get orthotics, that's, you know, you don't want to put them in your shoe and go play a three hour game. You know, you want to, um, like Nick said, uh, ease your way into it. And where do people get orthotics? Do they get them from like a running store or a sports store or online? What do you recommend? So uh, running stores and sports stores tend to have a good selection. Uh, Dick's Sporting Goods has a, has a good selection um, and Holly Lane in Stanford does as well. Um, so, um, you know, that's kind of nice because then you can see and feel the orthotics yourself. You can also just order them online. Um, but, um, you know, it, it is important to try them and, and sometimes you'll have to go through trial and error. You might have to try multiple um, different kinds before you find one that works for you. Gotcha. Yeah, I also direct people to REI. Um, in Nor is it uh, Darien and Norwalk? Uh, there's an REI right out there that fits for super feet too. So, excellent. Thank you. Um, okay, Nick. Here's a question for you. Um, and Liz kind of talked about this. Dr. Cody talked about this a little bit before. But um, on average, uh, how long does it usually take to recover fully from a, an ankle sprain? Um, that's a good question. So I, I typically tell people, you know, uh, it's highly variable first off. I mean, it depends on the severity of the sprain. A lot of times, the first time you come in to see one of us, we can't tell you it's going to be two weeks. It's going to be, you know, six weeks. Um, but I think most people are surprised at the effect of an ankle sprain and how long they might have symptoms for. So I try to set that precedent early so they kind of have a realistic expectation. Because most of the time, even if you're able to return to sport within two weeks, a lot of times that pain and discomfort can linger a little bit longer than that. Um, so I usually tell people it's about six weeks to sometimes six months or longer. Um, so in severe cases, I mean, it can take a long time to really not only build up strength and be able to like get strong enough to get back into your sport, but also for all of that residual pain and sometimes that residual swelling to go away. Um, so I think most people, you know, expect like a few week recovery, but a lot of times it takes a little longer than that. So how about same day? For example, if you're on the sideline and evaluate a football player who sprains their ankle, what sort of criteria are you using to let them go back or to keep them out? 
so, you know, like Dr. Cody mentioned, is this their first sprain? Is this their second, third, fourth sprain? I think that's all important. Um, the extent of swelling and then obviously ruling out more severe injury, like a fracture is, is kind of uh, the baseline evaluation for that. Uh, if an athlete sprains their ankle, they're able to come off and, you know, they're not limping, they have sore ankle uh, and they can tolerate, you know, progressively loading that ankle. And I feel that they're actually strong enough to protect, you know, not only their ankle, but their knee, their hip and everything else uh, in that sport. Then we can sometimes get them back into the game. Uh, and sometimes, you know, we will have the trainer wrap them to provide a little bit of extra stability or compression uh, in that situation. But um, but, you know, there's always that increased risk and you have to kind of tell people if you're going to go back that same day into that game, there's a higher chance that you're going to re-injure that or retwist it and maybe cause some more damage. So you got to weigh the pros and cons. And uh, in most situations, you know, for most people, they, they decide to, you know, sit out and kind of let things calm down and come back later. So. Great. Um, one question uh, that has come in is, um, ankle sprains often present uh, with a lot of swelling and a lot of bruising, maybe even more so than a fracture. Um, and sometimes it scares people quite a bit. Do either of you have any thoughts on that? Um, yeah, it's, it's scary. It doesn't look good. It doesn't feel good. Um, there are very few injuries that um, need to be evaluated immediately, though. So um, even if it's really swollen and bruised, um, the, you know, the one exception to that is if the foot is in the wrong position, if there's deformity, if, if it doesn't, like if the toes are pointing in the wrong direction, or if there's a big cut in the skin, you know, those are reasons you want to be seen immediately. But if it's really just a lot of swelling and bruising, it's okay to wait a couple days. Um, you don't need to be seen immediately. Um, you can rest it, elevate it, and it probably will not change anything about your ultimate outcome or your management. So um, it's going to be okay. <laughs> it's okay to wait a little bit. Um, it's scary, but but it will go down. Um, that is probably a scenario where you need to see a doctor, but you don't need to see somebody immediately. Do you guys recommend using crutches in the beginning period? What are your thoughts on uh, taking off some weight from the ankle, helping people walk a little bit better? So yeah, I think if you're having pain when you bear weight, then yes, you want to use crutches. Um, if you feel better when you go into a boot, you don't necessarily need to use crutches, but I think as long as you're having pain, it helps to take some weight off it until the pain improves. So a lot of the recovery from an ankle sprain is just listening to your symptoms um, and uh, progressing yourself, You know, putting more weight on it, coming out of the boot and so forth when you start to feel better because everybody's different. Great. Um, hey, Dr. Scrignoli, a question for you. Um, when someone has an ankle sprain, do you usually recommend ice or heat for that injury? And how much, how often, how long? Yeah, good question. So, um, so typically, you know, after a sudden injury of the foot or ankle, whatever it is, if it's an ankle sprain or something else, um, kind of the go-to initially would be ice. Um, so I typically say 20 to 30 minutes at a time just because you don't want to over ice something and cause damage to the skin. Um, and you can probably do that about every four hours as needed for pain. Um, and so I would do more like 20 minutes, I think a little less on the 20 foot. minutes. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, uh, you know, just making sure that you're not damaging the skin. I mean, that's the biggest thing with icing, but, um, yeah, elevation compression in conjunction with that. Um, it's not typically till like after the first week as the swelling starting to go down, if it's still warm, you know, ice is the best thing, I think. But if you're having kind of residual stiffness, that's when I'll usually use some heat uh, to treat somebody. But that's usually not for a couple weeks after the injury. Awesome. And I have, uh, also can be, heat can be more helpful before you uh, work out or play. Um, and icing is better for after. Yeah, warm it up and then do your exercises and then uh, do the anti-inflammatory ice afterwards. I, I tend to agree with you. Um, Dr. Cody, do you use anti-inflammatories regularly with ankle sprains? Um, in the early period, the first few days, yes. Um, so there are conflicting theories on this. Some people say that anti-inflammatories um, can slow down healing. Um, 
And um, there's not really much evidence for that, but it makes sense. Um, so some people say you shouldn't take them, but then there is data that shows that after an ankle sprain, there's damage inside the ankle joint that cause your body to release a bunch of factors that cause more damage. So taking anti-inflammatories can slow down that damage, therefore it might be good. So there's really conflicting um, advice as far as anti-inflammatories go. So I think in the first few days, there's absolutely no harm in taking anti-inflammatories. They help with pain, um, you'll just feel better. So I, I think you should take them in the first few days. Excellent, and we have one minute left, but two good questions that came in from some attendees. Uh, Dr. Scrignoli, um, is there a difference between a roll and a sprain? Um, so, uh, you know, roll is not really a, a necessarily a medical term. I think a sprain is usually a result of rolling your ankle. So I think a lot of people, what they say is they rolled their ankle and what they're saying is they've actually twisted their ankle. So depending on how badly you twisted your ankle, you could possibly have sprained it too. So a sprain is actually an injury to the ligament. Um, so if you've, you know, twisted or rolled your ankle and it's severe enough to cause an injury to the ligament, typically you will have pain and swelling, and that's what we call it an ankle sprain. Um, so the rolling is maybe more just the uh, action. As the mechanism, the, exactly. Yeah, the mechanism is the roll and the result is the, the sprain. Yeah, exactly. Um, excellent. Uh, and Dr. Cody, last question for you. Um, what criteria do you use to help you decide when to start formal PT versus home exercises only after an injury? Um, I think formal PT can be very helpful starting from day one, actually. Um, so a good physical therapist can do a lot to help with the pain and swelling that you get early on uh, from an ankle fracture. So I think um, there is no downside to starting um, early physical therapy, provided you're seeing a good physical therapist who's experienced with ankle sprains. Um, I think it can actually be very helpful. So um, I will often start um, pretty much right away after an injury. Excellent. All right. I think uh, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Dr. Cody and Dr. Shrignoli. Um, thanks again for tuning in. And if anybody has any questions or would like to learn more about uh, HSS, feel free to leave us a comment or visit us at uh, hss.edu. Thanks, everybody.